Carmen and, you know, awful stuff like that. You listen to Carmen? I did. I oh, honestly wow. did. Not influences, but... Yeah, anything like that. Um, but when I got that into high school and stuff, I started listening to a lot of uh, Green Day and Offspring. And, yeah. Um, 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 Switchfoot. Switchfoot. But that was later on in high school, super talent, stuff like that. So, cool. that's all my influences. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we all have really different influences. I grew up, like, also the Christian home. DC Talk was one of my favorite bands growing up. But, uh, but like, James, on the other hand, had some very different bands to listen to yeah. this too growing up right, in DC man. Talk. Black Sabbath, Poison, <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I, I love like yeah. I was into a lot of like kind of the indie or West Coast scene, like uh, Rose Blossom Punch and Port Lou. Oh yeah. Um, some of those like Black Eyed Siva. Like Jeff, you were in all that too. I've never right? even heard of those Siva, bands, so Plank Eye. Yeah, Plank Eye was yeah, awesome. Um, I still never heard of that. Dang. There's so many good like you know the only the early Tooth and Nail days were rad. All you know, together like, separate. Yeah. Seven Day Jesus. Yeah, awesome. Seven Day yeah, Jesus. Seven day Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mortal. Mortal was a huge influence on me. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of good music out there. So, is that, is that a good overall <laughs> That's idea great. of what our inspiration is? Nice. Yeah. It's basically everything from everywhere. Yeah. Classical music, too. I grew up with classical music. Yeah. Harry Collins Jr. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Debussy. I grew up listening to a lot of classical music and jazz as well, like Louis Armstrong and all sorts of stuff like that. But just all sorts of music really in my house. Yeah, I, I was in a Christian nowhere in a Christian house, so I had no clue about any Christian music. So there's there a few choir boys in here as well, so we had we had that whole thing going for us too. <laughs> all right, next question. Uh, I'm from Greece FM in London, Ontario, Canada, right. and uh, Petra's coming through with their final yeah. tour, and I was wondering if any of you wanted to. Uh, we're putting together a CD to give them that night, and I wondered if any of you wanted to say anything to Petra as they're retiring. Anybody Thanks for this means war. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the grave robber. Yeah, dude, the ripe old age of seven. This means war rocked my world. So, <laughs> Good album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Petra. We have a radio show Wait, for teens, uh, and that's, of course, your main audience. And I know my, I have three teens of my own in my own home. They love your music, so keep up the good work. Uh, who does most of the writing? Is it a joint effort? And uh, it, what, what keeps you inspired, keeps you putting out new stuff? <laughs> John Michael writes all the lyrics, and uh, we collaborate a lot on the music with, uh, with John Micah, James, and myself, I'm Ryan, um, and our producer, we all kind of just get Aaron together. Aaron Sprinkle. Aaron Sprinkle is absolutely amazing. Um, we just get together in the studio and collaborate and create some magic. So, it's kind of yeah, like as far as record is going to be quite a bit more uh, mixed as far as the, yeah. over here, the, comp <laughs> the composition of the songs and stuff. I mean, we've had a few changes in our uh, lineup uh, in recent history, and um, I, I think it's a lot more involved. Like it's more, it's more of a whole band, just having ideas and, and just being made whole and uh, jamming together, jamming out ideas together and stuff. This jamming new record's gonna be fun. So. Yeah. And as as far as like lyrical inspiration and stuff, follow you back. <laughs> uh, as far as lyrical inspiration, uh, just things that we deal with in our lives, uh, things that we see other people deal with. Um, really, the the lyrical content is stuff that's been on our hearts, and so I really I really believe that when you write from your heart, that uh, it's a lot more effective and it's real. We just hope that our, our music's transparent and real to people, and uh, we're not just writing for the sake of writing, but actually writing meaningful messages of, of things that we care about. So. Last year, you guys were on the cover of a CCM magazine with the words "The Future of Rock." Is that thrilling or scary or both? Depends on what they mean by the future of rock. Um, if, if they mean that's a good thing, then it's awesome. <laughs> if, 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 if they, if the, the Christian market has been, there's this weird division between rock and like being evil or whatever in some people's eyes, and then there's some people that that just love it. And I think hopefully that that's those lines are beginning to get blurred a little bit, and uh, 
and if we can be part of that, I think that's awesome. You know? I'm pretty sure CCM so, meant that in complimentary yeah, no, I, fashion. <laughs> I, I, I think so too. It but might I'm, have. I'm saying like, depends on how you take that. You know what I mean? Like, there are some Christians that would read that and be like, <laughs> rock bands, <so>, you know. <laughs> but I really hope that we can be on the on the on the cutting edge of what rock and roll music's doing, and uh, not just in the Christian market, but hopefully in what's happening in music across the board. I hope that our music's felt relevant and can, you know, hopefully be on the cutting edge of anything that's out there. Um, I think it's about time that Christians had music that's ahead of mainstream music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Over the past few years, you guys have gone through shakeups and you've changed the members. No. We've got a couple of guys from seven places. We got Dave and Jeff there. Did you ever feel like breaking into like like it never happened or something during during a gig or what? Oh, absolutely not. No. Oh. Man, that, that, that's cool that you guys even picked up on the fact that we were ever in seven places because uh, seven places was kind of like there for hovering kind of under the radar for a couple of years and then we kind of faded out. But um, man, since we joined Cutlass, it's been Cutlass, you know, and uh, we really feel like there's kind of been this cool healing between, you know, Dave and I with the things that we had going on in seven places and, and uh, why we decided to, to stop the band and, and with Cutlass and having them bring us in. Um, we just really feel like that uh, that we're all kind of complete in one unit now, you know what I mean? So, man, there's no looking back at all. Like, we're just really excited to get in the studio and, like Dave was saying, collaborate as a band. And um, As a super rock group. Yeah. You know? Super group. Yeah, we're like we're like the first Christian super group. Yeah, this is gonna be <laughs> two bands combining. This is gonna be that way for you guys for the first time too, though, right? Like, yeah. As far as like music writing went with Seven Places, like mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's really amazing what the Lord has done for what Cutlass is now. Like I, I always see this picture of like the Lord taking two broken families and like just piecing us together because like. I mean, we're we're stronger than we've ever been as a band, and we could have ever been, just because of the fact that we can relate to each other, because we know what the broken model looks like, you know. And if we ever see any inkling of that just sneaking back in, we we know the way to handle it. We know the way to relate to each other and fix it, and speak to each other in a loving and serving manner. So, like, just the, this this next record, you guys are gonna hopefully hear a lot of amazing things that the Lord has done with us and hopefully they'll come through our songs. So. Last question. Woody Woodland from Life 100.3 guys and uh, this is for anybody. Um, big topic around where we are up in Canada is Christian kids getting tattoos. Their parents are freaked out about it but the kids really really want to do it. Tattoos are uh, bad. We're doing like a talk back show in the morning so we're going we're gonna to get people to call in. Tattoos What's your bad. opinion about <laughs> Christians getting tattoos? Hmm. James. <laughs> That's James. Uh, all right. Well, uh, you can't see this on the radio, but I am bedecked with ink myself. Bedecked. And uh, my opinion is this. Um, first, of, first of all, Jesus Christ cares much more about our hearts, like whether our heart were dedicated and devoted to loving Him seeking righteousness and serving him all the days of our life you know uh, much more than whether we do or do not have ink on our arms I think Jesus sees straight through like all of that and and if I'm wrong I'm wrong and his grace covers that but I definitely feel like the tattoos that I've chosen to get on my body are not wrong because the Lord has just brought around so many amazing opportunities for me to talk to people about you know the art that's on me or just the meaning behind it you know they'll see like the little bit of Hebrew poking out under my sleeve and be like what does that mean and I get to say well it says Jesus is my Lord and that opens up a door to talk to them about like why I believe that or just the fact that I get to sit in a chair for six hours with a tattoo artist that's not a Christian and teach him about what all of my tattoo means because I'm the only person in the shop and all the other artists are gathered around and they're like soaking it up like a sponge because they've never even heard the gospel before you know so I just know that the fruit that comes about it cannot be you know unblessed it cannot be undone by anything that the world or you know just you know the law puts upon it because Jesus Christ has just totally covered 
all that we can do, you know, and, and I, I really think that the heart of the matter is whether your heart is dedicated to him and not whether you have a tattoo on your arm or not. Okay, some liners. Uh, would it be better if we split them up? Right on.